What's up, guys? We are back. Wait, that's the educational video. Damn, I did it again. What's up, guys? It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time to bust some BS. Only this time, got a little bit of a different what the fitness for you. So this, this week, I'm actually doing a what in the fit. Blah, 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 blah. This week, I'm trying to learn how to speak while I blah. So this week, I'm actually doing a what the fitness on someone I actually like and think that most of their stuff is really, really good and you should actually follow. This is from Food Science Babe, who she's on TikTok, she's on Instagram, and she does really, really great stuff. My apologies in advance to her for the first thing I talk about hers as being a what the fitness, but I'm gonna make this more like a discussion. Probably won't drop any F-bombs because I actually generally like her, but I do disagree on this point and I think it's an important point to address. Again, you guys should all go follow her. She puts out really good stuff, busts a lot of BS. I disagree with the post she did here um, yesterday and this is uh, November 30th when we're recording this. So the post is November 29th if you guys wanna go back and check it out. Please be respectful, do not leave nasty comments, etc., etc., etc. Like I said, she's one of the good guys. I just happen to disagree with her on this particular topic. The post says, BMI is not a scientific scale. Weight stigma is harmful. By exaggerating the risks of fat and the feasibility of weight loss, Campos and Oliver claim the CDC, the US Department of Health and Human Services, and the WHO inadvertently perpetuate stigma, encourage unbalanced diets, and perhaps even exacerbate weight gain. The most pervasive irony is that we may be creating a disease simply by labeling it as such, Campos states. After controlling for the influence of smoking, drinking, physical activity, education, age, race, and gender, the NCI-led group found that death rates were far higher for the underweight than for the obese. And on average, overweight men and women died at a lower rate than those in the healthy rate range. It is much more likely that U.S. adults who fall in the overweight category have a lower risk of premature death than those who do so of the so-called healthy weight. Underweight is actually associated with more excess deaths than class one obesity. So that's actually true, uh, that last part's true. But let's go through this a little bit systematically. BMI is not a scientific scale. This is a bit of a unicorn fallacy. Just because something isn't perfect doesn't mean we should trash it. Do I agree that there are some situations in which BMI is not overly useful? Absolutely. Athletes, I have a BMI that should be a, an obese person, but BMI is not meant for me. It's meant for the average person. If you look at the validation studies, and I'll link some below, uh, BMI is actually quite valid for the majority of people and usually predicts body fatness quite well. The next one is, well, if we label something a disease, we might be creating it. The whole point of this post is that obesity isn't a risk. It shouldn't actually be a disease so how can you create a disease by labeling a disease if the disease actually isn't a disease? All right, is everybody's mind turning right now? Basically, if obesity isn't harmful, then who cares if you label it, right? Other than, I mean, vanity, that would be the only thing based on this. And then they go through these different metrics and she points out that underweight people are more likely to die than overweight people. True, nobody is recommending being underweight, at least I'm not. But what I would say is that when you look at people who are obese, and you look at obese people who have healthy obesity, which is basically all their blood markers are within a normal range, so the only difference really being their weight, you still see increased mortality in the obese cohort. I'm not saying that if you're obese, you're gonna die tomorrow. I'm also not, see, see I have to get all the straw man arguments out of the way first. I'm also not saying that if you're obese, you should lose weight. That's a personal decision. In fact, I could care less whether an obese person wants to lose weight or not. If somebody says, hey, I know I'm overweight, I'm obese, I have zero issues with that, I love myself, good fucking on you. See, there's my F-bomb. Good fucking on you. No, I mean, we should all strive to be happy. My gosh. Like, I've known plenty of people who were shredded with amazing physiques who were fucking miserable human beings. Could not stand to be around them. I've also known quite a few people with obesity that were fucking awesome to be around, and I would much rather be around than people who were lean. So I'm not saying that weight is uh, an evaluation of somebody's value as a person, and I'm not saying people should lose weight, but I don't feel it is helpful to perpetuate a narrative that obesity has absolutely no harmful outcomes because that is simply not true. Now, if you are somebody who's overweight or obese and you exercise 
and you limit your stress and you do these other healthy habits that people talk about, well, one, you'll probably lose weight long-term anyway if you're implementing these healthy habits. But even if you didn't, if you just stayed the same weight, uh, will you be healthier than somebody who maybe is lean but has really unhealthy habits? Maybe, maybe, but that's not the point. The point is we are assessing, is this an independent risk factor? So independent risk factor means all other things being equal, does this contribute to dying earlier or a greater risk of disease like cardiovascular disease and cancer than not having it? And the answer pretty consistently in the meta-analyses is yes. Once again, no one's perfect, right? So if you drink too much and you're healthy weight, you are increasing your risk of mortality. If you have other unhealthy lifestyle practices, like you don't exercise enough, but you're healthy weight, you increase your risk of mortality. If you eat too much saturated fat or you have high LDL, you could be healthy weight, but you increase your risk of mortality. But once again, we are talking about independent risk factor, all things being equal, are you as healthy as you possibly could be? And the answer is no. That doesn't mean you're gonna to die tomorrow. It doesn't even mean you're gonna die earlier than somebody who is lean or healthy weight because there are many things that contribute to longevity and overall health. But once again, the question is not can you be obese and healthy or can you be obese and live a long time? The question is all other things being equal. On average, will you live as long if you are overweight or obese compared to someone who is not? And the answer is probably no. That's not weight stigma. That's not judging. That's just looking at data objectively. This has become a really emotionally charged conversation. And unfortunately, it's prevented good discourse. And I'm hoping this video, since I'm, I'm not attacking her, is gonna promote some good discourse. Because at the end of the day, I absolutely agree that there's weight stigma. 100%, no question there is weight stigma. People don't get jobs that they should get based on their credentials because of stigma towards obesity. In fact, I remember talking with somebody one time who was like, well, I would never hire somebody who's overweight or obese because then they're just lazy. And I'm like, have you ever seen how many like successful entrepreneurs or like CEOs or investment people are overweight or obese? Just saying that is so unbelievably stupid just because somebody has struggles in one area of their life doesn't mean they're gonna struggle in all areas of their life. There's some stuff in other areas of my life I'm really shitty at. That doesn't mean I'm not really good at interpreting scientific research. It also doesn't mean I won't be really good at lifting heavy shit. So this idea that, oh, if somebody's overweight or obese, it's just laziness. I used to think that way when I was 15 and I hadn't actually read scientific literature and I hadn't actually met people and talked to people. Some people are very hardworking in one area of their life and not so much in others. But when it comes to overweight and obesity, while it is caused by an energy imbalance over time, there are many factors that contribute to that. For example, we know that kids who are exposed to trauma are more likely to become overweight or obese. There's also tie-ins with overweight, obesity, and depression. There's many contributors to obesity. Now that's not saying that if you're depressed or if you have trauma in your childhood, you're automatically gonna be obese. No, no. It's also not saying that like trauma slows your metabolism. No, but people develop different habits out of comfort. Some people develop a gambling addiction or alcohol addiction or they smoke or they have other unhealthy habits that they use to cope with trauma from their youth or tra current trauma. And some people get it from food. And if we don't try to meet them halfway and just try to bludgeon and shame them, it's not gonna work in terms of reducing the rate of overweight and obesity in our society. I think it is a problem, I think the solution is gonna involve accountability, but with a shitload of empathy. And right now, I just see two ends of a really, really extreme spectrum. I see an empathy end where nothing is anybody's fault and they have no control over their lives whatsoever. And they, even if they wanna change, they actually can't change because they are predetermined to be a certain way. Not helpful! And then the extreme accountability side where everything is your fault and it doesn't matter what your excuses are because you're a fat piece of shit. Also not helpful!
The reality, like many things, ladies and gentlemen, is somewhere in between. Yes, there are things, trauma, that contribute to overweight and obesity. Yes, at the end of the day, there also needs to be some self-accountability because people have lost weight and kept it off, so it can be done. Is it very difficult? Absolutely, but it can be done. And so I think what needs to happen more is people who have lost it and kept it off, what can we learn from them? All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, go follow Food Science Babe because she has really great stuff. Just because we disagree on this particular topic doesn't mean she's not great at what she does, and most of her stuff is absolutely excellent. So I definitely recommend giving her a follow, and hopefully this will spark some really constructive discourse. And I know I didn't rage. I dropped a few F-bombs. This is not the content you signed up for, so don't worry. Rage will be back next week, I'm sure, because there's a lot of fuckery. All I have to do is pull up my TikTok, and I'll find it. Catch you next week, guys.